Greetings everyone, this is Raul speaking and welcome to the third video in our techniques installment. This week's video is dedicated to introducing students to optogenetic and chemogenetic techniques. I would like to begin today's techniques video with a thought experiment. Imagine that within a heterogeneous population of neurons, you had come to hypothesize that a specific subpopulation of these neurons played an important role in a specific behavior. For our purposes, let's use itch as an example. Perhaps your hypothesis was that green neurons in this subpopulation are important for itch perception and initiating itch-dependent behaviors such as scratching. An ideal way to test this hypothesis would be to somehow specifically manipulate the activity of these green neurons and ask if changes in their activity drive changes in animal behavior. This would work to establish a causal role between this population of neurons and itch perception. Alternatively, what if you wanted to prove that two neurons were synapsing with each other? You could use patch clamp electrophysiology and record from both of these cells simultaneously, stimulating the one upstream while recording from the one downstream would allow you to test this idea. However, this isn't always possible. Sometimes there exists physical or technical barriers between you and your cells of interest. In both of these thought experiments, we need precise, versatile tools for manipulating neuronal activity. Well, in fact, the ability to control neuronal activity with spatiotemporal precision has been a long-term goal of neuroscientists. Because being able to control the activity of neurons gives researchers the ability to probe causality between neural circuit activity and brain function or behavior. To this end, modern optogenetic and chemogenetic techniques were significant contributions to this goal and are important tools in the toolbox of a modern neuroscientist. So let's talk about what they are and how they work. Optogenetics is a technique that uses the combination of light and genetic engineering to control the activity of a cell. How it works is that a light-gated ion channel, often called an opsin, is expressed in a specific cellular population of interest. For this example, we are looking at channel rhodopsin, which is a cation channel activated by blue light. If you are recording in whole cell voltage clamp mode from a neuron expressing channel rhodopsin, application of blue light on this neuron will produce a large inward excitatory current. In current clamp, this stimulation is enough to produce action potential firing. Thus, optogenetics allows scientists to artificially activate the neurons using blue light to test any ideas regarding their activity. Opsins for optogenetics now exist in many flavors and they allow scientists to manipulate activity in a variety of ways. For example, one could use a yellow light gated chloride channel. Activation of this channel would produce large outward currents that are capable of effectively silencing a neuron's activity. Chemogenetics is a technique that uses chemically engineered molecules, receptors, and ligands, activators, to alter neural activity. More recently, Chemogenetics has become synonymous with DREDS. DREDS stands for Designer Receptors Exclusively Activated by Designer Drugs. DREDS is a sweet suite 
of chemogenetic tools, meaning there are various activators that can be used with various designer receptors to produce a desired outcome. For our example, we are going to focus on the use of dreads for neuronal inhibition. HM4DI is an inhibitory GPCR, a G protein coupled receptor engineered to be exclusively activated by CNO, clozapine and oxide. Activation of HM4DI by application of CNO is known to result in the hyperpolarization of cells and synaptic silencing for an overall decrease in activity. If you record the membrane potential of a neuron expressing the inhibitory dreads receptor while washing on CNO, you can see that it results in hyperpolarization. This effect is quantified here across several cells wherein, on average, the result is a 5 millivolt decrease in membrane potential after CNO application. This hyperpolarization makes it much harder to evoke action potential firing in these neurons, effectively inhibiting them. To summarize, both chemogenetics and optogenetics are tools that can be used to manipulate neural activity in the pursuit of hypotheses testing. While not covered in this video, because it will be covered in its own future video, Virus-mediated gene delivery can be used to express these constructs in a specific cell type or tissue. After they are expressed, the receptors can be activated through application of a ligand or light to ultimately manipulate neural activity, brain function, and behavior. Thank you.